career development is throughout the lifespan. So it's from high school when you're trying to decide on an area to study or what your passion is, right through to retirement and what you're going to do then. Career development and experiential learning. Solving the old dilemma of chicken and egg. So I had a student who came to see me and he had recently graduated with his education degree. Uh, he had done, uh, he, he was going out into the field and he indicated, uh, you know, I said congratulations, that's just fabulous, you graduated, it's a great accomplishment. And he said, yeah, it's a great accomplishment. And I said, uh, so you must be celebrating, yeah, yeah, we're celebrating. I've realised though that I don't like kids. And uh, I just, I don't think I can be in the classroom with kids. And I've done education, and now what am I going to do with my life? And I thought, well, isn't that fabulous? I think it's wonderful that you've identified that you don't like kids. Why go into the classroom and torture all these lovely little children who want to learn when you're not happy? So let's talk about all the things you can do with this education degree. And I think what, what was great about that opportunity was to let the student know that they had opportunities to think outside the box that they didn't have to go into the K-12 system, that with their education degree they had a skill set that was transferable to a whole bunch of different careers. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wanted to do something outdoors. I wanted to do something physical. I wanted to be hands-on. I didn't want to be behind, that, be, be behind a desk. When I was a kid I built a little mini zipline and it was a little bit weird actually. I had uh, I had the right idea. I had the poles up. I strung a, actually a line, a nylon rope across. That probably wouldn't pass, obviously. And I cut off a, a bike, and, and so I had the handlebars hung upside down. And then I ride across the rope on the wheel, and I'm holding onto the handlebars. To now, I I think I said back one time when I was uh, here doing the course, I said. Imagine a zip line across that falls, and uh, so that's what I did. There's no other zip line in Atlantic Canada, so then we basically had to write all rules, regulations, procedures, and operations for the zip line. So we got a great group of uh, uh, guides as well as myself, and I have five others that are trained. And uh, people are smiling, people are screaming, people are lovely. You know, gent like so far since I've been in operation, I haven't had any complaints, and you just see. Uh, you're making people happy, right? So, just make people happy is, 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 is a good feeling. A lot of time in high school uh, doing music. I went to a really musical high school and I had some fantastic teachers there. Um, so it seemed to me the logical progression to go into music school, although I didn't see myself pursuing a, a career in it later. I thought that I'd do music school at my undergrad before I kind of, you know, battened down and got serious and did med school afterwards. I think it was in my second year I decided that, no, this is, I want to do a performance degree. I want to, I love this. I love practicing. I love learning all these styles of music. And um, it fostered in me something that I haven't been able to shake since and leads me to need to be a career musician now. I usually get up in the morning and the first thing I do is practice. First thing I do is take out one of my horns and it depends on what I'm working on. This morning I was playing clarinet, practicing stuff for a show that I'm going to do next week. And then I get to do the arranging and, and all that stuff, the, the creative the creative musical stuff. That's, that's when you get, you get all the work done in the morning and then you get to do the, the creative work in the afternoon and then go to rehearsal at night. Memorial University Career Development and Experiential Learning. Kickstart your career.